Hey there, I'm Alex. Today I want to talk to you about something that goes very much in line with the way I like to work. I like to keep things very organized, very labeled, uh, and very explicit for me or for others in case someone else needs to hop on my script to quickly be able to tell what's going on without them having to dig into the properties of each node. So I'm, I'm big on labels, right? And not only that, but I also like to keep my scripts as light as I can while I'm working and then leave the, the heavy stuff for, for render time. So I'm going to be talking specifically today about a few things that I uh, that I've added to my scanline render a few years ago, and it's been it's been kind of my my go-to thing. It it just helps me, and and hopefully it'll help some of you. So what I'm talking about, well, one of the things I'm talking about is I like labels a lot. So if whenever I create a, a merge node, right, if I if I change the mix, you'll see. I immediately get uh, feedback without me having to have the properties open, right? So that's something that I like very much. So I can quickly tell if I if I meant to just have it up only five, then great. But if I didn't, because I was just testing something, I can quickly see it uh, as I'm scanning through my through my script that something might be off, right? So that's that's one of the examples. Another type of label that I like to do is, I guess, more of a dynamic label. So as you can see, I've brought in a grade note here. If I change the mix, so you know, nine times out of ten, you're never gonna be, you're not gonna be changing the mix as often as you would in a merge node on a grade node. But uh, you know, sometimes you do have to. However, again, this is something that's very delicate because. I want to know exactly if I did it and if I meant to do it, right? So uh, this type of label that I have here only appears if the value of mix is not one. The moment it goes back to one, it just resets. But if I take it to point, let's say 0.465, there you go. So we have a label. And if I were to reset it, then we don't have a label, all right? So that way, you're, you know, I, I just don't want labels on every single node I create. But sometimes there might be some that you might want to have it in case you change something you didn't you you didn't mean to change, right? So that's why I added that to my grade note. So today I don't want to talk about merges and grades. I, I want to talk specifically about the scanline render, right? So scanline render has a lot of settings, right? And scanline render is a tool that we use a lot, uh, be it for you know for projections or all sorts of stuff, right? Particles, uh, all that stuff. So. Scanline render is an interesting one because it does have some settings that are can be very heavy, right? So I I like to keep it I, I like to set a let's say set a look or set a quality for it and then I don't want to keep that stuff on all the time, just like you wouldn't want to keep motion blur on, on on your stuff all the time, right? So what I've done is uh, the, the things I, I usually change is the you know the aliasing, right? So I usually like to render at aliasing high for final rent for final quality, depending on what I'm trying to do. And then I also want to know if I if I'm adding over scan or not, just to make sure that I am if I'm intending to or I'm not if I'm not intending to. And then the other thing is that uh, also samples, right? Because samples, as we know it, if we if we go here and I have have just you know an animation of a sphere just moving which is posted here in the middle if we add some samples to this right then that's what's going to be driving our motion blur if if that's the way we want to do it through the scanline render so uh because i i find myself doing that quite a bit and also changing the overscan and then the anti-aliasing then i i basically created a new default scanline render for myself which is the exact same uh scanline render right as you know it the only difference here is that I've added a user tab, right? And in this user tab, I have GUI samples and render samples, right? So what does this mean? What this means is that at the if if I have this live on my script, right, and I just play this back, then that's great, right? It's uh, behaving as we expect. It's just not giving me any motion blur because the samples are set to one, set to the GUI samples. However, if I go ahead and render this, right, and I just say render, and I'm going to set it to render using frame server, and let's do those 20 frames, right? So you can see here it's completed. So if you go back now and I bring in that render, you see that version of it has the motion the extra samples attached to it right so this is the kind of stuff that I'm, I'm i'm talking about so i do i like to set up my samples right so let's say i'm i'm working on this comp right now so i'm going to add just the 10 samples to the gui here just so i can visualize the final quality of the render but once i have that set up i don't want to keep that on i want to keep my my script as speedy as possible so i'm always going to set that back to one so if we go to the multi-sample tab, right? What I've done is I've expression linked the 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 samples there. So if we go into the expression here, 
it's just reading uh, the samples from both the GUI and the render samples, depending on what we're trying to do, right? So that's why we have a GUI switch here. So if we go, the, the other thing that I've added to this, to the scanline render is also a few labels, right? So you can see at the moment, we can very quickly, without having to have the properties open, uh, we can quickly see the GUI samples are set to one and the render samples are set to 10. So just by just quickly glancing at your setup, you can tell that this is rendering at the quality you want it to render. So the next thing I added is the other two things that I changed quite a bit, right? So if I look at this, uh, it tells me that, well, stuff is default, right? And when I mean stuff for and specifically for me is the anti-aliasing hasn't been changed and there is no overscan, right? And because those are the two things that I do change often and I wanna know if I've done it, then if I change here anti-aliasing from none to high, you'll see it appears, right? So it's telling me anti-aliasing is set to high. And if I change the overscan, say 100, right? It's gonna tell me overscan 100. If I go ahead and reset those, so I'm gonna say overscan zero and aliasing none, you see both those labels have now gone away. So that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. It's just, you know, for me to quickly be able to tell and to keep things as efficient as possible within the script. So now that we have said that, I, I'm going to share with you the the um, the what what I've uh, the code that I've set up for the label. So just so that you can go ahead and use it. And you know, as always, I'm gonna I'll probably just share this on the on the comment section in the video, just so you can copy it if, if you don't want to type it yourself. But I did want to explain a little bit of how this works. So the this this right here, so val so the the value samples th that's the way you would do um, this is the way you would do a label, right? So let's say I'm gonna bring in a blur node, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and, and delete my what what I've added there in in the node. So if if we go ahead and type um, let's say here value oh, not like that, but value size, right? then just by having that it's just going to tell you the size of the blur right so that's why the value samples it's going to give me the samples that i have set up for my uh for my scanline render so if we look here right if i open my my scanline render if you just hover over sample it's, it's going to tell you the name that you're going to be calling in that in that uh, line of code so samples is what i'm calling and that's why i have it set up that way and then render samples it's going to be looking for the value of render samples so if we go to my user tab here and we hover over that it's going to tell us render underscore samples which is why i have that like this here and then <clears throat> and then uh if we look at the last two lines, those are the conditional labels that I was talking about, the ones that are dynamic and they just uh, go and, and appear if I have certain parameters set, right? So what I'm saying here, if you know, you can just copy it and set it up for whatever you want, but if you wanna understand what's going on here, is basically you're telling it, if the value of anti-aliasing is not none, then tell me what the anti-aliasing value is, right? So it's gonna print the label of anti-aliasing equals you know the value of what's set up otherwise don't tell me anything right because if it's set to none then you don't have to tell me anything that's that's what that what this is doing same with overscan if the value of overscan is not zero then tell me what the overscan value is just print the label for it otherwise don't tell me anything and that's that's what's going on here right so if we again if we just change this you know oh, not that but the moment we change it then all label appears so that that's the two type of labels that i have set up here i have one for gui samples render samples i want to see those all the time but the other ones i, I want to be dynamic just for me to be able to tell if they are there then i know everything's set up properly for me so you can go ahead and set up this fairly quickly and i guess at this point you can just hop off if if you understand and you can just build it yourself but i figured i'd take a, a couple of minutes just to show you how to set it up in case you're interested so uh i, I have here another scanline render and this is this is just a vanilla uh scanline render so not, nothing uh nothing has been added to it and you see it's miss if i open the, the properties panel for mine you see it's missing that user tab of course right so it's it's fairly straightforward you can just right click and say manage user knobs and then you say add, we want to go ahead and add a tab, right? And I'm gonna call it user, and the label's gonna be user, right? You can just call it whatever you want, really. So there we go. Now we have, oh, otherwise, uh, other way around. So if I'm gonna select that, and the name is user, not, 
capitalized and the label is user. There we go. So now we have our user tab, just like we do here. And then I'm going to right click, manage user knobs. And now I'm going to add a floating point slider, right? And I'm going to call this, uh, let's say GUI underscore. And you can, again, you can just call this whatever samples, whatever makes sense for you. So GUI samples. And I'm going to keep, keep that at zero, one, that doesn't matter. And then another one, and this one I'm going to call render underscore samples and render samples. There we go. So now, uh, interestingly, uh, actually you can, there you go. Okay. Yeah. So that's all set up there. And then GUI samples, of course, you want to keep at least one and then, you know, let's say render samples for now. You just want to keep it one until you decide what quality you want to render, right? But just so that we can quickly see if it's working, I'm going to set it to 10, right? So now we have our GUI samples and our render samples, right? And now the next thing you want to do is you want to expression link the um, the samples here, right? For for the so that it reads the data from the user tab. So I'm going to go ahead and, and grab it here, just so because it's already written for me. And I'm going to show you it in a minute. So there you go. And I'm going to let's say, let's just paste it here so you have it as well, and it's nice and obvious. Okay. So there we go. So there you go. This, this is the GUI switch that is going to be, it's going to give us GUI samples until or unless it's rendering, right? And one thing that's important here is that this is rendering either with the frame server or in a farm. If you just, if I just do this, if I just hit render and I don't turn on render uh, frame server, right? And you see we have our sample set to one in 10. If I just render like this, what you'll see is that our sphere now doesn't have any motion blur if I reload that render, right? So you, you have to render through the frame server if you want this to work. So if we reload this again, there you go. Now we have our motion blur again. So now that you know the, uh, the expressions, right? That go into the samples, and uh, you've already set up your your user uh, your user tab with the GUI and render samples. I guess the last thing we need to do is add and and again this is just what I like to do. But you don't you you can of course add whatever other thing you need to, you you want to add there. So in my case, I am going to copy. Oh, actually, I already have it here, of course. So I'm just going to copy that over. Right, and this is just what you're seeing here, right? So from the GUI samples all the way to the return here at the end, and that way you're going to have built your, you know, basically a copy of the scanline render that that I like to use. Again, it's the same one, so not, nothing has changed. It's just the different way of you looking at it quickly and getting inf and valuable information, or uh, just keeping your your script, you know, tidy and and speedy as as much as possible. All right, hopefully this helps you. It's not very complex and it's something that's very easy to set up and will give you a lot of information in your scripts, will help others whenever they jump in and it'll keep your scripts nice and speedy. All right, cheers.